Okay, welcome back. Now that we've known about the weather factors, let's talk about the patterns that weather makes. An air mass is a huge body of air that has similar temperature, humidity, and air pressure. Air masses are classified according to the temperature and humidity. The four major types of air masses influence the weather of North America are the maritime tropical, continental tropical, maritime polar, and continental polar. And you can see a chart uh, comparing those things here. Air masses can be warm or cold and humid or dry. As an air mass moves into an area, weather changes. Most air masses move in the United States by being influenced by the prevailing westerlies and jet streams. Movement is mainly easterly in direction and north-south movement is usually due to the jet stream movement. As air masses move, they collide with each other. Air masses don't mix easily, rather they push each other out of the way. The boundary where two or more air masses meet is called a front. Changing and unsettled weather occurs along fronts, and colliding air masses can form four types of fronts, cold, warm, stationary, and occluded. A rapidly moving cold air mass runs into a slowly moving warm air mass in cold fronts. The denser cold air slides under and lifts the warm air upward. As the warm air rises, it expands and cools, which is called adiabatic cooling. Remember that deals with pressure as well. When the dew point temperature is reached, clouds form. And the greater the moisture content in the warm air, the greater the precipitation that results. Cold fronts can cause severe weather, but the weather events are usually fast moving and of short duration. Warm fronts are when a fast-moving warm air mass overtakes a slowly moving cold air mass. Warm air is less dense than the cold air and it can't push the cold air upward. So the warm air moves up over top of the colder air almost like jumping over a ramp. Clouds and precipitation forms when the dew point is reached and produces mild precipitation and it is rarely severe at warm fronts. Warm fronts are very slow moving and they may result in several hours or days of clouds and precipitation. So those long soaking rains generally are due to warm fronts. When cold and warm air masses meet, it's a stationary front, but neither one can move the other. These fronts generally produce weather conditions similar to that of warm fronts. So again, long, slow precipitation. Occluded fronts happen though when a warm air mass is caught between two cooler air masses. Cold air mass number one will move in and push the warm air mass upward. Cold air mass number two moves in and pushes the warm air mass and the cold air mass number one upward. The warm air mass is completely cut off from contact with the ground, which means that it has been blocked and that's where the term occluded comes from. Cyclones are areas of low air pressure and anticyclones are areas of high pressure. Remember with the Coriolis effect that the high pressure, the air moves in a clockwise ma manner and in low pressure, it moves in a counterclockwise manner. Each has characteristic airflow patterns and distinctive weather conditions associated with both cyclones and anticyclones. They originate within the troughs and crests of the jet stream. Cyclones are centers of air, low air pressure, so the air movement is upward, inward, and counterclockwise. These are associated with clouds, winds, and precipitation. Winds will spiral inwards toward the low pressure center of a cyclone. Anticyclones are areas of high pressure. Air movement is downward, outward, and clockwise, and these are associated with clear, dry weather. Winds will spiral outwards away from the high pressure center of an anticyclone. Isobar lines can be drawn on a map to show the changing air pressure values around a cyclone and anticyclone, as well as their centers. Isobars are drawn in 4 millibar increments. Airflow is always from high pressure to low pressure. For thousands of years, people in various cultures have observed weather and try to relate it to their everyday lives. Every culture has folklore related to the weather such as 
Catchy drawer and sticky door means coming rain will pour and pour. Even the Bible has it. In Matthew 16, 1 to 3, uh, it says, When evening comes, you say, It will be fair weather, for the sky is red. And in the morning, today it will be stormy, for the sky is red and overcast. You know how to interpret the appearance of the sky, but you cannot interpret the signs of the times. And so, again, predicting weather has been a almost a hobby of humans for thousands and thousands of years. Modern technologies have made improvements in our ability to observe, understand, and more accurately predict weather events. Weather balloons have been around since the 1700s, and they carry instruments that measure temperature, air pressure, and humidity. Weather satellites um, have been launched since the 60s. Tyros-1 was the first weather satellite, and it was launched in 1960. This is a picture of Tyros-1. Modern satellites carry sophisticated instrumentation that measures and records temperature, humidity, visible infrared water vapor content imagery, wind speed and direction, as well as solar radiation. Scientists then use computers to develop different models of how a front may move. These predictions are then used to make weather forecasts. As more data becomes available, some models are found to be incorrect, while others are found to closely fit the predicted conditions. These are a few of the symbols typically used on common weather maps. You do want to make sure that you can understand a little bit of it. I probably will not test you on too much of it, but you do need to understand, you know, for example, what the main center section means. Another thing you'll need to understand is how to read a weather map. So this is an example of the type of weather map produced by the National Weather Service. Weather maps in newspapers use symbols that show fronts, high and low pressure areas, as well as precipitation. And color bands can also be used to indicate different temperature regions depending on who's producing the map. So again, make sure that you can understand isobars, how to read a weather map, what types of fronts are what, and also what the main weather symbols are. Okay, that concludes this lecture. We will talk about catastrophic weather in the next lecture. Have a good day.